tushangilie Kenya taifa letu tukufu Kenya tunayoipenda Kenya inchi tunayoipenda Tajivunia sana tukijiita wa Kenya inchi ya So uh, I'm actually going to present to you uh, a topic here, but at lasting uh, the Kenyan experience. Uh, so it's not really that uh, scientific findings, but uh, the state of uh, bad at lasting in Kenya. So yeah, that's my name, it's Kenyan Kennedy, um, the Kenya bad data manager. So I'll take you to, the, to I'll introduce you to uh, bad at atlasing in Kenya. Okay, let me. Okay, yeah. So we know that uh, the most important information towards conserving a species is knowing its distribution. That is where it it, it is. So you can apply any conservation. Uh, uh, strategies on uh, on it or or within its habitat. So this will help us uh, in giving us an early warning or uh, acting as our early warning system for environmental change by tracking the changes in bird distribution and relating them to the environmental changes. Uh, we can also know the uh, through the tracking and uh, knowing the distribution, we can know the timings and patterns of bird migration. Yeah, this, uh, uh, by doing this, we are able to monitor population sizes and trends of threatened uh, and endangered endemic species. Yeah, and the di distribution, know the distribution, distribution provide information of bird species abundant as well. Yeah, this uh, it gives uh, a relative abundance by through estimation by knowing where it, it is. This information help us understand how birds and general wildlife adapt or responds to the anthropogenic influences uh, like population increase, uh, destructions of uh, habitats uh, and uh, uh, pollution, etc. So, going, uh, I'm going to introduce you about the uh, history of the bird atlasing in Kenya, and we'll be look at first the bird atlas of Kenya. So, the idea of bird atlasing came about uh, 40 years ago. And it was a proposal of the Ornithological Subcommittee of the Eastern African Natural History Society, which has now been uh, uh, separated. It's now, we now call it Nature Kenya in Kenya and Nature Uganda in Uganda. And uh, this idea was immediately initiated. And the purpose was to document the distribution and status of 1065 birds uh, species, which had been recorded in Kenya. Uh, this project was run for the period 1970 to 1984. So, but uh, they also uh, considered pre-records as far as uh, 1900 and uh, post-records uh, after 1984 before the book was published before the atlas was published. So it was this initiative collected bird records and resulted in the book A Bird Atlas of Kenya published in 1989. So uh, this bird atlas uh, used square, quarter square degrees, which are approximately 28 kilometers by 28 kilometers to map distribution. So in this first map you uh, in the screen, you can see the small squares. Uh, it is 28 kilometers by 28 uh, kilometers. 
So that's what we revise as quarter square degree. Uh, data was sourced from published records, the museum schemes, uh, contribution, the checklist contribution received directly from observers, planned excursions, nest records cards uh, from the museums uh, and the records of the East Africa ringing scheme, or sometimes we call it uh, banding, the banding scheme of the Eastern Africa. So these were the sources of data uh, uh, which was used to produce this map. Uh, Kenya was the third country in Africa to do this after Gambia and Sudan. So the second map uh, is an example of the result from the from the this bad atlas, which was uh, published in 1989. So we, you can see the small square boxes uh, indicate the presence, while the larger one black, uh, that's where the breeding uh, was confirmed. So, uh, so after 1989, uh, there was need to still do uh, uh, bird atlasing, but uh, since there was no uh, initiative, they started another initiative, which looked at um, uh, uh, range extension of the species, which had been uh, recorded, especially in the uh, 1989 atlas. So this was uh, in early 1990s. It took place in 1990s to early 2000, and it was known as Kenya birds. So Kenya birds was mainly uh, to regularly publish range extension of birds in the now discontinued birds. So this uh, project ended uh, in uh, early 2000s. So, and this was like it, it, is the, it, was, it was in form of a booklet, and then it had all the information of the uh, range extensions uh, and checklist of uh, 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 birds uh, collected in the field. So it was, I think it was, this was a biannual publication. So uh, for every year, each year, there were two publications. So uh, after that came uh, the, the need to, uh, to apply technology in the monitoring of this bird and uh, uh, then came the Kenya Bird Finder. Kenya Bird Finder uh, was introduced in 2006 and it ran to 2013. Uh, its aim was to record bird observation and, uh, and map it. And this was based uh, in the BirdLife International and that database was also kept there. The projects, however, are focused on hotspots only. So it had a few shortcomings. Uh, it only focused on hotspot and other places were left uh, behind. So, and the other thing was that birders primarily visited major birding sites, thus the hotspots, and there were no committed attempts to visit uncovered areas to enable mapping of bird distribution. Setting of record was a major challenge, and data could not be used for scientific purposes without significant amount of cleaning. So uh, this uh, was the main challenge which uh, were, uh, needed to be addressed. And it then, uh, the, the current bad atlasing was now developed. Uh, so in, in Kenya, uh, the, we have the current bird atlasing state is that we have a number of atlasing projects uh, which are running. And they are, uh, this include the eBird, the iNaturalist, and Kenya Bird Map, which all uh, map distribution of, map, 
of birth, but uh, I naturally is, as you know, it's uh, not only birth, but uh, all wildlife. So Kenya bird map is local and mostly used at lasting initiative in Kenya. So this is because of some of the advantages it has, especially on the use of data or the access of data. So, uh, so uh, introducing Kenya bird map, uh, which is the main uh, thing I'll be talking about today. Uh, so it is the follow-up of the Bad Atlas project, well, the, which I previously talked about, the 19, which resulted in 1989, a Bad Atlas of Kenya book. It started in 2013 and is still growing. Uh, it is now part of the larger African Bad Atlas project, which is uh, gaining ground in uh, Africa. And it has been, it's, uh, I think it started in South Africa and uh, now practice in Kenya and Nigeria. And a lot is being done to intro introduce it in, in other countries. Yeah, it is a collaborative project of the National Museums of Kenya, Arocha Kenya, the Tropical Bio Biology Association and Nature Kenya. Uh, all this, uh, uh, do a lot of work in man managing it. It is helped by the Fitzpatrick Institute of African Ornithology in South Africa, West Africa Town, on techn technical support, that's the, the data management systems. Since publication of the Atlas book, much has changed in terms of habitats and climatic condition. And as a result, the distribution and status of many of our birds might have changed. So this is what led to establishment of the project to look at the extent to which all this has aired on bird distribu distribution. So the aim of the project uh, was to map the current distribution of all Kenyan birds and describe their status. So uh, the main players uh, uh, are the citizen science, scientists uh, run this, with the help of public, uh, which which has uh, has helped us to have a lot of uh, data. So uh, these citizen scientists include bird watching enthusiasts, tour guides, researchers, students, and so many other people. Uh, it provides. Uh, the citizen scientists, uh, as it has funded advantages, as it has pro provided opportunities to travel and explore new areas of the country while providing data that can be used in making conservation decisions. So Kenya Bad Map uses uh, protocol in data collection, uh, which was firstly uh, developed by the Sabab 2, that's the South Africa Bad Atlas project, uh, and it involved uh, recording of uh, bird distribution in grid squares called Pendax, which measures uh, five minutes by five minutes in size, and that's the approximately nine kilometers by nine kilometers. Atlasas uh, visit each pendant and record a list of all species of birds seen or heard. Yeah, two, may, two ways of recording uh, is, uh, is there, the manual using a uh, notebook, the normal uh, notebook, uh, and the use of bird laser app. The manual uh, collection of data uh, will be followed by subsequent uploading to the website uh, with with its metadata. Use of mobile app, uh, we are using Badlesa, which uh, is a Southern Africa bad mobile app. Uh, and it allows one to submit the records to the uh, bad map directly from the app or from your phone. The app automatically records all important details such as pen touch, start time and hours, hourly totals. It will also automatically start a new list when a cross-pentad, when one cross-pentads or when 
you pass a five day limit for the pentad. That's the requirement for the protocol. So you, uh, a pentad can be at last only every five days period by the same atlasa. The protocol requires at least two hours to, uh, dedicated atlasing during this period. And that's formed the full protocol of uh, atlasing. So at least you should at least do two hours to make it a full protocol. At last record, less than two hours is considered an ad hoc and does not uh, really uh, have a weight in terms of uh, using the data in analyzing. That's uh, when you are when is analyzing the data because it is assumed that there was no much effort put in collect collecting the data. So that's. Uh, uh, I think uh, an agreement uh, from the developers that uh, in in data collection and they came up with this protocol. So uh, we'll go to the current status of uh, BAD. As I told you, it, this uh, it, we the Kenya BAD map forms part of the larger uh, ABAB, that's the African BAD Atlas project. Uh, and this is our current uh, status of distribution. So all these uh, colored places, these were a lot of uh, 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 recordings, observations have, have been made from. So it, uh, it is formed by there are some small squares. You, uh, you, 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 may, you might see it in the next few slides, uh, the nine kilometers by nine kilometers squares. Uh, so this is the coverage currently. Uh, and you can see there are some places which like the north, northeastern parts of Kenya, which, has, which is not covered, but uh, I'll tell you why in shortly. And parts of north, western parts of the country. So that's how we are. Uh, so, uh, in summary, uh, since the project started in 2013, uh, 10,220 uh, cards, those are basically the checklist uh, submitted uh, when one goes to, uh, to do budding. So, a total of 10,220 cards have been submitted so far. Uh, for full protocols, that's uh, the checklist, which have been done more than two hours. And uh, 21,934 uh, ad hoc protocols. Uh, we have covered 1,515 1, pentads out of the 6,817. So we are at 22.2 coverage. Uh, and that means we still have a long way to go. Uh, and we have engaged 456 observers who are directly uh, uh, sending their records to the, to the project. Uh, and we have managed to record, uh, have records of 482, 985 individual records. Uh, making uh, a total of 1063 species out of the possible 1100 so the remaining species are mostly the rare species which was uh, sometimes uh, were very rare to see or the backgrounds from the polyarctic so but we have uh, in terms of species coverage uh, we we are really doing good. So on the other hand, the ad hoc uh, has covered about 2,085 uh, cards of the total 600, uh, pentads of the total 6,817. That's in terms of uh, ad hoc coverage, we are at 30%. So uh, the number of servers over the years this is how it looks. Uh, it has been increasing, but of late, it's uh, it's like it's carving off, and uh, 
that's uh, I think something we we'll look at. Maybe encourage, still encourage more brothers to to participate. In terms of guards, we are really doing good. It's an increase, a continuous increase over time. So the records, the records are still also increasing, and we are, we are I think we are really doing good there. Uh, but still, we'll be we looking. We will uh, make sure that uh, it still goes up. The species it's carving off, so I think we have exhausted most of us in terms of recording species. But in terms of distribution, we need to to do a lot. So uh, that was part of the introduction. So I can now go to insights from the project. So we have seen a lot from so far from the data we have, it has been submitted to the project and uh, this include the rich extension of some species. And as you can see here, we have a, an extension of a, a species called the house crow, the Indian house crow. Uh, this was uh, a species introduced to most parts of Africa in the last century, around 1940s. Uh, it's an invasive species, uh, which is now gaining ground in Kenya. And as you can see, uh, the, diff uh, the distribution in 1980s versus the distribution uh, uh, recorded in the Kenya bad map. Uh, it's not that much clear, but it's now, it has really gained ground and it's, it's going uh, inland. It was first introduced to the coastal, coastal uh, Kenya, and it's now going inland. And it has been recorded as well as Baringo in, the, in uh, parts uh, in near uh, central Kenya towards the western parts of the country. So it has really been grown. Uh, and as it, is, as it is an invasive species, it's of major concern, especially to the conservation of other birds because it has major, it had already major impacts on the bird species in the coast where it first settled. So there's an eradication program which is being run and is spearheaded uh, by different uh, organization, including the Kenya Wildlife Service, uh, the National Museums of Kenya to eradicate these species uh, using uh, stalicides uh, to kill them. So, uh, and uh, Kenya Bad, uh, the project of the Kenya Bad Map is coming uh, in really in plenty uh, by identifying the hotspots of these birds where they are mainly found and uh, where they are breeding. They are doing their breeding. So uh, this project uh, is really helping in term, in guiding uh, the distribution of these birds for eradication or control uh, exercise. So this is one of the bird which has really gained, uh, which has expanded its range. So the second one is the Indian house sparrow. And this one, I think it holds the record uh, of spreading very, uh, at, at a large scale. So the house sparrow, Passa domesticus, uh, this is the subspecies, the Indian sub subspecies of the uh, of the house sparrow, and it was introduced also early last century, uh, also in the coast around Mombasa, uh, and it's really you see. So that's like this is in 1980s. It was only found on the coastal regions of Kenya. And now if you can see it, it's all over Kenya. So uh, it's, it's a concern uh, with this invasive species. And we, 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 uh, the project has, has seen the extent of this invasion. But the good thing about this bird is that it hasn't uh, had much impact on the indigenous bird species because it has carved out its niche, as you know, it's one of those birds uh, which live actually on our houses and 
spend uh, eat the remains of their foods uh, from people places so they don't have so dire direct uh, impact uh, on acting as uh, competitors of the other bird species so another species which seems to have uh, increased its range uh, is the speckled pigeon, the Columba guinea. Uh, it's not that much, but mostly to the, towards the Eastern Kenya, this species has been recorded, and which was not recorded in the bird atlas of Kenya in 1980s. Uh, and also it has increased towards the, towards the coast. Um, and a few places uh, in Western Kenya. Uh, another one species which uh, uh, as it seems to be increasing is the Ains babbler, and this is a, a positive increase because Ains babbler is one of uh, in our endemic species uh, found in central Kenya, and it seems that it's uh, increasing some range, but we don't know what is making it increase uh, the range. Uh, it's uh, it has increased to a bit towards Nairobi, uh, so, which is going southwards, and uh, a bit towards north northwards. So here are some of the species which has increased in their range. So we have both uh, distribution uh, types. So there's those which are increasing and there's those which are reducing. So, and those which are reducing uh, include the white-headed vultures. So I think they are, this means they are really affected uh, by the uh, human anthropogenic influences. So, uh, and they are being really affected. So as you can see, the white-headed vulture the Trichonoseps hospitalis. Uh, it was found nearly everywhere in Kenya, but for now, let me concentrate on the southern parts of Kenya because <laughs> in the Kenya, in the Kenya bird map, there, there's no much coverage towards the east. So this bird uh, has mainly been lost in the southern parts of Kenya, and it's now concentrated on the national parks. Uh, this one over here is the Masai Mara National Reserve, and that's where they are being concentrated now, and parts of Savo National Reserve, and they are sparsely populated in northern Kenya, uh, as compared to what uh, their distribution was in 1980s, uh, or uh, and then before that. So it's one of the species that has been uh, adversely affected. So the other one is the bearded vulture, uh, or, or the lama guy. Some people sometimes call it lama guy, the Gibaetas babatas. This is one of the species which was thought to be extinct in Kenya. Uh, but of late, it was record. It has been recorded. A single species was recorded in uh, in 2020 in Western Kenya, which was its range uh, sometimes back. So uh, this forms one of that species which has been uh, mostly affected, uh, which has reduced in terms of distribution over time. So we are just looking at. This is the time frame, uh, 30 years time frame, uh, and all these changes has happened. So that tells us what, how we are really impacting on biodiversity. So this form really a, a real nice, uh, the distribution give us real nice impacts. We have add on the environment. So the other Busa has been a, a wooded vulture. Uh, it was uh, quite quite common in Kenya back then, uh, but now it's like the white-headed vulture is uh, 
it is it is concentrated in parts of the less less populated parts of Kenya, northern Kenya and the national parts. Yeah. So this species uh, in some other areas, it's it's able to it has been able to uh, colonize where the, to stay or to survive where people are, but it seems in Kenya is not uh, the same. So, and it has been really affected. Yeah, it's mainly found in Northern Kenya for now. Yeah, and it's very rare to see it. So, so apart from uh, extension, range extension and, uh, uh, and reduction, some of the other insights we can uh, we get from uh, the data we have been collecting uh, include the migratory strategies. So I will just shortly look at the uh, strategy employed by the lesser gray shrike, Lanius minor. So these are species, as you see from the map here. Uh, it's a Paleoarctic migrant uh, wintering in Africa during the winter season. So, and it's, uh, it breeds in the Eurasia. Uh, and it is uh, thought, it's thought that it's uh, a non-breeding non endemic to South Africa. A non-breeding endemic because uh, most of the, its population, when it's not breeding, they spend all of their time in South Africa and migrate back to Europe for breeding. So the entire population which breeds in Eurasia winters in Southern Africa, the thornfell of, of Southern Africa. So uh, these are species which I just look at. There, there are a lot of species which uh, need to look at, uh, which help us a lot, uh, which give us a lot of insights. And these species, uh, the interesting thing about which led me to uh, put it in this presentation is that from the literature, it's known to, to pass through Kenya only when it's going uh, to winter, to its, to, to, its, uh, summer, to its breeding ground in Europe when after, after, after it, has, uh, it has wintered in Africa. So uh, during uh, the autumn, it, it passes uh, through the other countries like Sudan, uh, Uganda, Zaire, that's the DRC, Congo, to its uh, breeding grounds. And when going back, they follow a different route more to the east past Kenya. So in Kenya, we entirely see these species only uh, during April uh, when it's going back uh, to its wintering grounds in Europe. Uh, it's spreading grounds in Europe, sorry. So, uh, but of late, uh, it seems there's been some changes because uh, this species has been reported in January. So this graph shows the reporting rates. So reporting rate is basically the number of uh, lists uh, submitted, the percentage of lists contain a, a species which has been submitted. For example, if let's say in a particular month, 100 uh, species lists have been submitted. And of those 100 lists, uh, uh, the gray strike is in the 10 of them, the gray strike is, is in them. So the reporting rate is 10%. So that's 10, which contains the lesser gray over the total list. Uh, times 100, so that's give you the, the reporting rate. So it's been reported in Kenya in January, February, and February. Uh, so they start arriving in March as they head uh, back to Europe and Asia where they breed, and then they take off. And by June, by July, they are all gone. But there are some, still some few species, uh, species uh, reports in June. And that means maybe there are those who of a summer. So this is a different strategy. Uh, they seems to be employing different from what it was back then. 
So uh, the data has really helped us know the changes or uh, which, which we might have caused as humans. So that's one of it. And we can also see the population uh, difference uh, trends in population over time. For example, this, this graph give, uh, uh, gives the reporting rates of different species over time since uh, from 2016. So I just selected some few migratory species and then looked at their reporting rates and then compared over the years. So for this first one, the, these are the migratory weathers. Uh, that's from August. Uh, I took the reporting rate for August to December only when they are, when they are known to be, to be in Kenya. So, uh, and if you look at it, you will see there is some trend. They like it's there is some trend which uh, is happening, some increase and decrease of uh, in different years. So, like for the for the common green chunk, the green the the top one here for the weather spot, you see there is increase in 2016. There was the report the reporting rate was four uh, which probably means that four percent for of each list uh, list submitted at the common green chunk. so and then in 2017 there was a bit uh, increase and then in 2018 they decreased at 2019 it increased and in 2020 was when there was a lot of species recorded. And in 2021, there was a significant drop. And it seems like most of the other species are following the same trend. So uh, and then I looked at the second graph, the non weather migrants. So uh, the common the common buzzard Araptor, Irobinite, ja, Eurasian Golden Oriole, Grasshopper, Bassard, Western Marsh area, and Lesser Grey Shrike. And all looks like they follow the same pattern. So this, we can, we, know, we don't know why this is happening. Maybe it's because of what's happening along the migratory route, whether there are, maybe there are some changes in food patterns and so on. So, it's something which needs to be investigated. And this helped us, uh, give us a lot of insight to what's happening uh, in the environment. So uh, talking a bit on the impact that Kenya Badmark has had, it has had a lot of impact on conservation. Uh, in terms through data insights, which has helped uh, in know what parts need to be put a lot uh, a lot of effort needs to be put uh, in order to conserve some species of birds like uh, the area which uh, which in western Kenya where the llama guy the bearded vulture was seen some years back like in 2020 it has now received a lot of publicity as, uh, and a lot of it has got there. And it seems soon it's, a lot of service has been carried. So it's, it's more likely that that area might be conserved for, uh, conserved for the wildlife. So it's really helping a lot. And this is just the start of it. We are still uh, looking forward to have a lot of to see a lot of things there. So uh, the other thing is education. Uh, a lot of education has been done, uh, especially during the expeditions uh, planned by the project uh, on different parts of the country. So there are a lot, uh, uh, during the expedition, they not only record, go and record the species, and, but also they get the community uh, people around where they are visiting, 
and educate them um, about what they are doing, they are, they, all the activities they are doing. So it's it's really uh, doing a lot of things. And this has really raised awareness uh, directly through the bird watching and field, uh, field visits. A lot of people have known uh, the importance of birds and what uh, they can do uh, in order to conserve or how they can uh, draw in benefits from all the, uh, from birds. A lot of training has been done also, uh, also from the, 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 the the travels which the researchers do. Uh, so people have been trained to bad, bad, uh, to identify birds. Uh, and also on our social media forums, like the WhatsApp, Facebook groups, uh, a lot of trainings are being done, especially on bad ideas and how people can, uh, can participate and uh, help the project or and other and uh, observe birds. So uh, that's the areas which has had really impact on. So, but we have had challenges uh, in doing all this, and it mainly comes from three areas. That is uh, insecurity. Uh, insecurity is uh, not good in most parts of Northern Kenya. That's why uh, there's very little coverage uh, towards Northeastern and uh, Northwestern parts of the country. This where uh, on the Western part bordering Somalia, there's some uh, there's really an issue, uh, a really a concerning issue of insecurity since the Al Shabaab mostly infect these areas and a lot of people are not going there. So, uh, going in hand with the insecurity is the remoteness. Most parts uh, in this area they are dry and there is very little that can support humans there. So, most thing people do here is, is uh, 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 nomadism. So, but the people are sparsely populated. And uh, this has led to very little development in terms of infrastructure. So, and most, there are no good roads going inside there. So, but in the future, we'll be looking at what we can do to, to make those parts uh, being, covered. Uh, the other thing is the concentration of borders uh, in single areas of the country. <clears throat> like where most uh, records have been got from is the central Kenya. That's where it's many of the islands where large population of people live. And this is where most of the borders come from. So they are covering, they are covering only few areas in where they come from, and uh, there has not been much effort <coughs> towards <coughs> uh, going to other parts of Kenya. So as you can see, cause the coastal strip of the country and southern and central parts uh, are well covered. So that's where most of the people live in. Yeah. So that's the <coughs> main challenges that we see when we are trying to cover these places. So towards the uh, ending, uh, there are some developments which we are making. Uh, we recently uh, finished digitizing the Bad Art Class of Kenya 1989, the previous the book I'd shown to you. Uh, and it's published in GB. It's now in an electronic format and one can have that. So what we are planning now is to have uh, create a web platform for comparing and monitoring trends in distribution of birds. Uh, and we'll be mainly using uh, bird atlas, the current bird atlasing initiatives 
and comparing with, with the, uh, the past uh, distribution atlas of birds. So species by species. So this is the idea of what we, if, if you can see the screen one. So we are having from, from this screen, you can see uh, this, it shows the distribution of a whiskered tan. So uh, the distribution, the green, the green squares uh, shows the gains, the red square shows the loss, and the yellow-green squares, the light yellow-green squares show them uh, that the species has been maintained, uh, the distribution of the species has maintained. So uh, we are planning to do that. So if you see the, the distribution of the whiskered tan here, it has in the coastal, especially the coastal region, uh, it's now, it lost in most parts and gained in some parts. So with time, this will come uh, to give us an overview of what is happening. So, yeah. So that's what we are really develop. We are trying to develop, and uh, we are still we still have a lot to do there. So that will be the end for today. And thank you for your.